Hello and welcome to a new kind of video. I finally got my camera set up, my lighting kit set up. So I'm going to be giving you some new kind of stuff, some hopefully more more frequent stuff. I'm going to be a little more unedited like some of my opinion videos, but I want to I wanted to be on camera just to I don't know, be like all the other cool kids, I guess. But the reason I am on camera is because I didn't I was a little too late on the draw for an Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered review, but I still wanted to talk about Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, since Assassin's Creed 3, the original, is a game that I care deeply about. I put it on my top 100 list, so obviously I have some sort of personal attachment to this game. So I wanted to cover it, and because I've always been someone who's, uh, who's fought on the side of Assassin's Creed 3, I've always been someone who saw the good in Assassin's Creed 3 and it overshadowed some of the negative things, but as I've gotten older and as I've been playing this remaster, it's become increasingly clearer and clearer to me that the bad stuff is pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> like, I still love the game, but the, the negative parts have become more and more apparent to me as I've gotten older and because of the remaster. And I kind of want to go into in depth as to the things I, I like about the remaster, some of the things I don't like about the remaster, some things I don't like about the game itself, things I do like about the game itself, but mostly I want to go over it through the lens of what I would have done had I been the guy in charge of the remaster. And before I get into that, I want to make it clear that remasters aren't super easy, you know, it seems like they should be, just, you know, oh, just you have the original game, you probably have the source code, you can just go in and change things and make them better. But that it requires a certain amount of time and budget that I think a lot of publishers aren't willing to spare for a remaster. Because I think if it is just a remaster, it is more of the sense of a re-release rather than a remake. They don't want to allocate the time and resources to completely rebuilding this game from the ground up if it doesn't mean that it'll... If that doesn't mean it'll translate directly into sales, per se. So, I totally understand that, like, a lot of the issues I might have with the remaster and some of the things I would have done. This is me talking if I had a relative, relatively reasonable budget, but because if I wanted to go off the rails, I would and change all a bunch of things. But I wanted to think of, I wanted to think of it more in the lens of what I would do if I was in their situation with the budget and the time that I think they might have had. So, first point, I made a list because I knew I would screw up. I like the improvements they made, but they should have gone farther. And yeah, what I mean by that is um, right away you're introduced to lock picking in the game. And I really like what they did with the remaster because they really toned down the lock picking. They made it way easier and they made it way less frequent. I think even just the random. In the original game, there were a lot of random treasure chests. And they uh, you had to lock pick in order to open them. And it was super annoying because it would just kill the pace of. The appeal of a lot of Ubisoft games, Ubisoft open world games specifically, is just throw in a podcast, go around the map, go to this point, go to that point, and just pick up stuff and 100% the game, get that platinum trophy, move on. But it was really kind of difficult, really kind of, it was kind of difficult in Assassin's Creed 3, the original, because you had to lockpick a lot of the chests, which really slowed down the pacing, really kind of fr made it frustrating to go collect collectible hunting. So... I'm really. I think that improvement was something that was a really good touch, and agree. And also, just um, loading is insanely fast, and as it should be because it's a PS3 game or an Xbox 360 game on current gen technology. Um, and they also um, they also kind of refined the weapon wheels. It's a lot faster to open it up when you press the button to go to your weapon wheel. It just instantly shows up over the game itself instead of taking you to kind of like a separate menu, and that helps the overall pace of the game really nicely. Um, alright, so the first thing I would have changed if I was in charge was optional objectives. I think, upon replaying it, I think optional objectives are the single biggest thing that kind of pre prevent me from saying, this is a great game, I don't understand why people don't like it. Because when you're going through and trying to 100% this game, and you're, you're confronted with these insane optional objectives as the game goes on, it becomes increasingly frustrating to play and trying to 100% those and it wouldn't be so bad if they weren't necessary to platinuming the game or if they weren't necessary to 100%ing the game if they were just oh you get extra money at the end of the mission or whatever but 
To fail an optional objective and then you get a big red X on the corner of the screen for the rest of the mission, it just feels like such a slap to the face. And it feels like... It feels like it's the developer saying you're playing this game wrong. Not, you're playing it how you wanted to and you missed out on an optional objective. It's just you are playing this game wrong. And so I think by either removing those, toning them down, or making them not necessary for the 100% or the Platinum Trophy or the, the 100%ing in general, I think that would go a long way to have helped this game curve a little frustration. Um, also, I had a lot of crashes. The game crashed very frequently. The remaster did. And I don't remember it really having these issues on PS3. I played the hell of it on hell out of it on PS3. But on the PS4 version, I was having a lot of crashing. It would come out I would have an infinite loading screen sometimes or sometimes I would try to load a mission and it would just crash the game immediately. And so I don't think that's that's just not acceptable for a remaster, for a re-release in general on a new platform. It should be the best version of that game possible. And so when it has things that are worse than the original, I don't even need to say anything more on that. It's just terrible. Um, some of the game in some of the stuff in the game still sucks from the original. The presentation is so bad at times. The cutscenes. Just the the way they're they're blocked, the way they're animated, the way they're performed. So it's just a very stiff and awkward presentation at times, and and a lot of the cutscenes are cut up by fading to black loading screens, and so there's just this really weird awkward presentation to the whole thing. Um, but also as the game goes on, it becomes clearer and clearer that I think they really struggled ending this thing. They were either the original develop development team, I think, might have been under a huge amount of crunch or they were just struggling to get it out on time because the last hour or two sucks. The final act, I'm not afraid, the final act of Assassin's Creed 3 is garbage. Um, it's kind of a mean thing to say, I don't know. It's just how I feel, and I love the game anyway, but I'm going to be spoiling it just because I think it's. I'm coming at it more from a revisiting standpoint so if you haven't played Assassin's Creed 3 and want to experience the story leave now or skip ahead I don't know do your thing but um when you're fighting when you're about to fight Haytham and the cannonballs hit or whatever and the screen is just blurry for a while it's just blurry for the rest of that chapter and you're fighting Haytham and the screen is blurry and it's like I don't understand why why they felt the need to do that you could have demonstrated that connor is wounded in a much less annoying way in my opinion um also the ending the resolution of charles lee i thought was super underwhelming in the original release how you kind of get like impaled by a wooden spike or whatever at like a ship building at a shipyard and then you just kind of limp your way through the the game for the next like five or ten minutes and it's just like so connor never saw it medical help neither car neither connor nor charles lee sought medical help in the time between their confrontation at the shipyard it's like what but um also killing charles lee in a cutscene, not even giving the player the option to like press square to stab him is like that's just kind of a slap in the face to any assassin's creed fan the final boss should always be be able to be assassinated by the character, I think, in gameplay, not a cutscene. So I remember being super underwhelmed by that, even in the original release in 2012. Um, and it just, you know, crept up. I had those feelings again when I beat it again for the however manyth time I beat it during the remaster. Um, yeah, I think the re-release in general is a bit underwhelming because they had the option to change things and they just kind of didn't but again it's like time and budget it's like do we really need to go in and tighten these cuts like reanimate cutscenes or and and also the lighting is super whack in the gameplay itself the gameplay itself looks great i thought the gameplay itself looks really good it's it just looks really nice even on compared to current gen games but during cutscenes the cutscenes are in-engine, so they're running on the same lighting, and it's just grody, dude. It's just, it, the character models look so nasty. So, I don't know what they were thinking. I mean, again, time, budget, it really just all comes down to time and budget, but, which sucks, because, yeah, I really don't think they were given the time or budget to go all the way with this thing, which would have been really cool, but I know that they know that 
fans of Assassin's Creed 3 are pretty few and far between. So there are only a very f select few people that were going to get... Assa the only people who are going to buy Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered are the people who got the Assassin's Creed Odyssey Season Pass, like I did. People who loved the original game and wanted to revisit it. Or people who... People who prefer the old school Assassin's Creed to the new school Assassin's Creed. Or people who like the news were introduced to the series through Origins and Odyssey and want to see... Want to get a taste of the old school Assassin's Creed. That's kind of the target audience... And I think in that regard, you don't need to go big on that because I think if you're if you're coming back to this game through the lens of the newer games, I think you have an understanding that things are going to be a little more rough. But whoo things are things are pretty rough at times. Um, but yeah, I don't think this game is going to change. I don't think this re-release is going to change anyone's mind on like if they already thought it sucked when it originally came out. I don't think that their opinion of that is going to change based on the remaster. Um, but it does give fans of the game like me an opportunity to experience it in a new way, which I always appreciate. I, I, lo I love remasters and remakes and all the kind of stuff. I love re-experiencing a classic game or just a game I love in a new way. Um, and yeah, it's enough for me. I'm disappointed with it in a lot of different ways. But overall, it was just really nice going back to a game that I care about. Um, yeah, it's in my top 100 would I would I move it up or down in my top 100 after revisiting it with the remaster? I don't know. I honestly don't know because some of the story beats are still super impactful. But yeah, when you're when you're going through the motions, just the beat by beat gameplay in like chapter four, five, and six, I think around there, um, the moment to moment gameplay is great. When you're just building stuff at your homestead, going on side quests, picking up packages and delivering them and going hunting when you're just going from like that kind of gameplay rather than the story the story missions that's where the game truly shines is in its side content which i think is kind of surprising and maybe that's maybe you can kind of see the early workings of origins and odyssey in assassin's creed 3 with its emphasis on side content it is kind of rpg ish at times um not nearly to the extent of origins and odyssey but you can kind of see the blueprint was laid in Assassin's Creed 3. So it's kind of, it's really cool revisiting that after the new ones and seeing the little baby steps they were taking toward where they are now. Uh, I'm still disappointed with where the series is now, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, yeah, I'm going to end it here. I think I said everything I wanted to say about the remaster. I think check it out if you care about Assassin's Creed 3, but if you already dislike Assassin's Creed 3, this isn't going to change your mind. Um, and I don't think it wanted to. Um, so with that said, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. I'm hoping to have videos like this a little more frequently. Um, I'm going to be debuting this alongside another video series, hopefully a weekly series, that you will see when that comes out. <laughs> you know, I don't know when I'm going to time it. It all depends on my work schedule. But uh, yeah, I... I have a lot of stuff planned for the future, and I hope to see you there. See ya.